Hello everyone. Uh, so we are going to be solving a, a nice problem on a projectile motion. Uh, in this uh, situation, I have broken the problem into two parts. And uh, this is the first part of the problem where we will look at projectile motion without drag on it. Okay. <coughs> and uh, the problem, uh, I have actually taken this from uh, uh, your older edition of your textbook. Uh, so the copyright uh, belongs to Wiley, uh, uh, Mariam and Craig. Okay. Uh, so here is the problem. Uh, you have a quarterback. Uh, who is shown here with the letter Q and then you have a receiver R okay unfortunately we don't have football this season but I hope everybody is staying safe all right uh, so you have a quarterback Q and a receiver R and uh, the quarterback is uh, throwing the football from an initial height of seven feet as you can see here in the figure and with some initial velocity V naught now the receiver R is uh, running at a constant speed of 30 feet per second. So, uh, key words in this uh, problem, the receiver is running at a constant speed of, uh, you know, 30 feet per second. Which means that, you know, when the receiver is running at that speed, what is the acceleration of the receiver? It's going to be zero. <coughs> and the receiver catches the ball after 2.5 seconds. And the ball lands on the receiver's hands 6 feet from the ground at the end of 2.5 seconds okay at the beginning of time when time t is equal to zero so this is the position of the receiver when time t is equal to zero i guess i want to write that here so this is when time t is equal to zero and then as time moves on the receiver is uh, running right at a constant velocity and uh, so this is initially he's at a distance of uh, or she's at a distance of 30 yards uh, they are at a distance of 30 yards from uh, uh, the position of the quarterback, okay? 30 yards is approximately 90 feet. Now, you're asked to consider two cases. In this problem, I'm going to consider the first case, which is the motion without any drag. And uh, without any drag considered where the only acceleration due to gravity is... Uh, acceleration is acceleration due to gravity. So, uh, acceleration due to gravity is acting vertically down okay so that is the only situation of this problem i need to find several things in this problem and and you can read it in the problem statement i'm not going to go through it we will go through it as we hit that particular spot of the problem okay first things first okay uh here is how i'm going to do it the first thing is that i want to find out where the receiver is after 2.5 seconds so where is the receiver after 2.5 seconds that is how far is the receiver from the quarterback that is how far is the receiver r from the quarterback q after t is equal to 2.5 seconds and this is fairly easy because the receiver is running at a constant speed okay since r runs at a constant speed of uh, 30 feet per second this implies that the receiver will have zero acceleration this implies that from T is equal to 0 seconds to T is equal to 2.5 seconds R has 0 acceleration which means that the total distance traveled is just velocity times time okay which means that the distance traveled by R from t is equal to 0 to t is equal to 2.5 seconds is s is equal to the velocity of the receiver which i call as uh, vr okay times the time taken so this is essentially 30 feet per second times 2.5 seconds so that is 75 feet okay so that is fantastic. So we have found out uh, some nice things about the problem to begin with. And now what I'm going to do is this. Okay, the football is uh, traveling as a projectile. Okay, 
to the second thing, the football travels as a projectile and we are considering no drag in this problem okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to sketch the trajectory of the football from t is equal to 0 to t is equal to 2.5 seconds okay so we will sketch the tra trajectory of the football from t is equal to 0 to t is equal to 2.5 seconds how do you do that it's fairly straightforward right because uh, uh, here is typically how I can see it initially the quarterback uh, let, let me first start off by looking at a Cartesian coordinate frame okay so we will look at a Cartesian frame okay and then the quarterback Q throws ball from a height of seven feet okay the receiver R catches ball at a height y is equal to six feet from the ground okay and the time considered is t is equal to 0 to t is equal to 2.5 seconds is the total travel time okay and uh, so if i make use of this uh, here is the situation so my x direction and uh, y direction are as follows so this is the y axis uh, here is my x axis okay here is where the quarterback is sitting okay quarterback is uh, sitting and then the quarterback throws the ball from a height of seven feet okay so i start off this way and this height here is going to be seven feet of course it's going to be a vertical height <laughs> okay the receiver was initially here i'm going to scoot this page up a little bit so receiver is initially here at t is equal to zero seconds and uh, that distance that you would have seen would be 90 uh, feet okay and then after a distance after a time of uh, 2.5 seconds the receiver is now sitting here right the receiver is here at time of 2.5 seconds and the distance traveled by the receiver from where the person was initially to where the person is now is 75 feet which means that the total distance traveled by the ball is 75 plus 90 or 160 feet which means the total travel of the ball in that time horizontally is going to be 165 feet and the receiver catches the ball at a height of six feet from the ground okay which means that this is uh, going to be a height of six feet from the ground level okay so this is six feet and uh, here is now the trajectory of the ball so it's starting off this way and then travels down along this parabolic arc and if you look at my elaborate lecture notes you will see why the trajectory is a quadratic or a parabolic path okay all right now in this situation i have the initial velocity okay so here is the initial uh, velocity so i'm going to call it as some v naught okay and let me say that the initial velocity is making an angle of uh, theta naught with respect to the horizontal okay so this is making an angle of theta naught with respect to the horizontal i do not know v naught i also do not know theta naught okay that's something that i have to find out okay let's uh, go ahead and uh, uh, then i also need to do several other things i need to let's call this uh, maybe i need to scoot some of these uh, variables out here so i'm gonna take this and and uh, write it down here okay and likewise i'm gonna get rid of that okay because we know what it is uh, then i also need to find out okay hey at the peak point of the 
trajectory okay i'm going to call that as uh, uh, well i guess that is not necessarily where the receiver was initially okay uh, so maybe I'm, I'm saying that this is the peak of the uh, trajectory okay so at the peak point p this is the peak point of the trajectory okay i need to find the location of this peak point and i need to find the time taken to reach the peak point okay and that's something that i have to do in this uh, particular uh, problem okay and then uh, that's about uh, most of the things that i need to solve for in this uh, uh, particular problem okay and uh, later on we will look at the same problem under the conditions of drag linear drag okay so things that we need to find okay so to find given what we know so far v naught theta naught okay initial velocity and its directions okay that's the first thing second thing is uh, we need to find the time to reach the peak p then we also need to find the location of the peak p from origin of the coordinate system okay and uh, the origin is typically denoted from the intersection of the x and the y directions and some things that we need to consider here we already know that this is projectile motion under acceleration due to gravity only okay so that's something that we know to begin with all right uh, since we know this and uh, since we have already derived the projectile motion equations for the situation of acceleration under gravity i won't do the derivations very very much here in this problem but i'll, I'll just point out the following okay so we know acceleration is going to be zero i minus g times j okay where g is uh, 32 point uh, uh, 39 point uh, or 32.1 feet per second uh, square okay and that's in uh, this uh, coordinate uh, frame okay and um, if I have uh, these values, um, then what do I do? I can say that, okay, uh, AX is equal to zero, which is DVX by DT, which means that after integration, you can refer to my lecture notes, VX is VX naught, which we can write as V naught cos theta naught okay which is fairly obvious from the figure as you can see here okay and uh, then likewise uh, you can write that a y is minus g and uh, this is dvy by dt which means that after integration we can write that v y is v naught sine theta naught minus g times t minus zero okay because i'm starting at time t is equal to zero okay so start time t naught is equal to zero okay then <coughs> what else do i know i also know that uh, the uh, starting uh, positions are known to me okay so i'm just going to say okay this is uh, x naught is equal to zero meters and then y naught is equal to seven okay that's something that i already know okay then uh, here is what i'm going to do i'm going to say that okay hey vx is dx by dt which means that after integration i will end up getting x is equal to x naught plus v naught cos theta naught times t and vx naught is zero so i can get rid of that quantity okay and i already know that t naught is zero okay and i also can see that okay hey uh, if you say vy which is uh, all of that quantity uh, is 
dy by dt which means that after the integration I can say the following y is y naught plus v naught sine theta naught times t minus half times g times t square okay these are all important things that we have already derived in our lectures but I'm just going to go over them very briefly here again okay I'm not doing any of the integrations all right and uh, these were the accelerations that we already know to begin with all right so what do I do next I need to find initial velocity and uh, the initial angle and uh, here is what I know okay at time of 2.5 seconds I know the position okay so to find v naught and theta naught okay what do I do we know at t is equal to 0 x naught is equal to 0 feet okay I should write this as uh, 0 feet here pardon me okay I don't want to mix up my units okay and uh, y naught is uh, given to us as 7 feet okay and uh, we also know that <coughs> uh, vx naught is v naught cos theta naught and v y naught is v naught sine theta naught okay then at t is equal to 2.5 seconds i have information on x and y i know that x at 2.5 is 0 uh, uh, well x at z i'm sorry it's uh, 165 feet okay and uh, y at 2.5 is 6 feet okay this is information that you know from here okay and uh, so what uh, what can i do i can just directly start substituting into the distance equations okay so considering the distance equations which you have here okay so i can say that uh, x at 2.5 is x naught plus v naught cos theta naught times t minus zero and if i do the substitutions then i get 165 is equal to 0 v naught cos theta naught times 2.5 which means v naught cos theta naught is 165 divided by 2.5 okay that's the first thing that i obtain or this approximately gives me 66 okay uh, then i also know that y at 2.5 is y naught v naught sine theta naught times t and then half times g times t minus t naught whole square okay 32.1 or 32 feet per second so let us assume that uh, g is 32 feet per second square which tells me that y at 2.5 feet is uh, going to be 6 is 7 and then v naught sine theta naught times 2.5 half times 32.2 uh, 32.1 or 32.2 you know but i'm just going to use it as 32 times 2.5 square okay which tells me after i do the simplifications v naught sine theta naught can be written as the following you know it's going to be 6 minus 7 plus half times 32 times 2.5 square all of these divided by 2.5 seconds so which means that i have the following v naught sine theta naught after simplification is uh, going to give me approximately 39.4 and i also have v naught cos theta naught is equal to 66 which means that i can find out sine theta naught divided by cos theta naught is 39.4 by 66 or theta naught can be found out as 31 degrees okay 
and then likewise we can find out v naught sine theta naught is 39.4 so that v naught after you find out theta naught and substitute you can find this to be approximately 77 feet per second okay so the first part of the problem is done this is theta naught and then this is v naught all right then we go to the peak point of the trajectory okay that's the second uh, part of the problem okay so look at the peak point of the trajectory okay and if i if i may if i may draw a figure here okay uh, so this is typically what we had to uh, begin with okay so i'm starting from some point here and then I'm traveling up onto the peak point is reached and then I come back down here okay uh, I go a little further below my starting point okay so this distance is uh, known to me right that's uh, six feet and then this distance initially here was seven feet this was the y direction and this was the x direction and here is the peak point p okay this is the point p it is very obvious to see that if i look at the velocity at the peak point the velocity is purely horizontal okay this is velocity at the peak this is only having an x component okay it does not have a y component Okay, so it is obvious to see from the figure velocity at the peak is only along the x direction which means that if I write the following okay which means if I write v peak as v x i plus v y j okay at the peak point okay x p and y p and i'm going to call this as uh, v x at uh, the peak point p so this is that okay then it is fairly obvious to see that v x p is equal to v x naught because at any point the x velocity is only the initial velocity okay so this is going to be v naught times cos theta naught and uh, this value has already been obtained as 66 feet per second okay and i also know that v y p is equal to zero feet per second and put together this tells me that v p is equal to 66 feet per second this is fairly straightforward okay and the key thing is the velocity at the peak is only along the x direction which means that the y component of the velocity is going to be zero okay now if i look at the location at the peak okay so let's say that okay xp and yp are the location at the peak okay uh, let me write my arrows a little clearly okay which means that if i mark them on the figure so that's essentially going to be the following okay i'm going to take this guy and bring that here uh, so this is going to be um, all the way from here to there okay that's uh, going to be the distance x peak and then this height that you're seeing here is y peak and since i know the velocity at the peak and i know the initial um, positions okay so this is going to be y naught all i have to do is just make use of the distance formula okay that's fairly straightforward okay so i can say that uh, x p is x naught and uh, plus v x naught times t peak minus t naught okay so t peak time taken to reach the peak okay and then i can also say that y peak is equal to y naught plus 
v y naught times t peak minus t naught minus half times g times t peak minus t naught square these are two things that i have but i also have one more v y peak is v y naught minus g times t peak minus t naught okay this is also something that i have and t peak is obviously zero uh, t t naught is obviously zero so i'm going to get rid of all of that okay x naught is also zero so i'm going to get rid of all of that okay and then what else do i know i know that the peak velocity is also zero so i can get rid of that in the y direction of course right so which means that from this particular equation i find out that t peak is going to be v y naught by g okay which tells me that okay hey if i want to find the peak time so t peak is going to be v naught sine theta naught divided by g v naught sine theta naught was approximately 39.4 divided by g is 32 and so if you crunch these numbers this is uh, going to give you t peak as approximately 1.24 seconds fantastic and once i find the t peak all i have to do is take it and substitute it back into the x peak and the y peak okay take that and substitute that back into this expression okay which will tell me that okay hey x peak is going to be v naught cos theta naught times 1.24 minus 0 okay which tells me that x peak and v naught cos theta naught is unknown to me okay uh, so from that i can find out x peak to be 81.2 feet and then y peak is y naught which was uh, 7 and then I'm going to have V naught sine theta naught times 1.24. I like 1.25 better than 1.24. 32, 1.24 square, which tells me that Y peak is approximately 31.3 feet. All right. And uh, something, something that I want you to keep in mind is that uh, this uh, these formulas please do not memorize these formulae okay this is something that you need to be able to derive at any point in time so please note okay so do not please do not memorize any of the formulae okay I want to write the formula properly any of the formula at any point in time you need to know how to derive them from scratch Okay, that's uh, something that I insist typically if you have an in-person class I would come and I would be barking at you for uh, not memorizing for memorizing the formula but but please make sure that you don't do things like that dynamics is math math if you memorize you're gonna forget it or you're gonna get confused if you know your fundamentals right if you know your foundational ideas right then that should be good enough okay and then you can always derive these things all right, thank you. And uh, I will go to the next part of the problem in my next concept talk and talk about the same problem in the presence of linear drag. All right, thank you very much.